<laughs> it's okay. That requirement is clear, so I can start on problem set five. And um, and yeah, and um, um, bring up ChatGPT. And again, this is the uh, demo of um, uh, I, I, how I imagine uh, s someone who's working through the course in good faith. Uh, can actually use generative AI to learn because I think uh, with uh, how good it's gotten accuracy wise, it's pretty good. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the questions it gets it right the first time, and even when it's wrong, if you you know tell it it's wrong and um, try to get a correction, oftentimes it will correct itself like in the first try or so. So the role that I imagine that's appropriate for generative AI is really as a tutor. Because I, I do think I, I am better than the generative AI still. Uh, I don't make the mistakes the generative AI will make. <laughs> I can draw diagrams. ChatGPT can't yet. Um, and, um, and so the role that I think a generative AI feels best is as a tutor, uh, as a kind of an interactive tutor. So I've uh, demonstrated that we have uh, recorded the videos of me solving every single problem in your homework video, homework question, homework set. But watching the video sometimes, you know, might not give you what you need for you to well remember the solution at a minimum. And oftentimes, what helps people is you know one just struggling through the problem that actually, you know, it for me that helps. Like if I've um, struggled and actually, you know. Uh, tried something and it didn't succeed immediately, that actually helps me, uh, especially with the memory. And um, there's that. And if you have a, like a specific question and the videos can answer questions, generative AI can, and oftentimes its answer is right. So, so that's the role that I see for generative AI that, uh, that can help you learn. And as I've covered uh, in previous sessions, you do have to take some precautions by which I mean, uh, you have to give it some additional instructions so that it doesn't answer all the questions right away. So I'll start with the prompt. Uh, hi, uh, I'm working on some Newton's law strategy problems, and I want to make sure that I am learning myself how to do the questions on my own. Um, so uh, please don't give me the whole solution right away. Wait for me to describe what I have done so far and just to give me the next step. By the way, uh, my professor really wants me to draw free body diagrams whenever possible. So please give me some descriptions that will uh, help uh, with the drawing the correct free body diagrams. I won't ask it to draw free body diagrams. It can't. I mean, in some near future, it might actually get better and be able to draw correct technical diagrams. But um, right now, it can't. So I'll just... Uh, um, and it knows my name because the memory it's updating actually has my name. So. <laughs> That's how he knows my name. <laughs> um, so let me find a question that's a fairly substantial. You know, this could be good. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a good standard question. Uh, it in involves inclined the plane. And um, it involves more than just the two forces of gravity and normal force. Um, so let me paste this in. And let me just do this and then see what ChatGPT gives me. Hopefully it doesn't say much more than simply acknowledging the question. Okay, free body diagram, all right. I guess, um, yeah, so gravitational force vertically downward. Yeah, so let me actually uh, try following those instructions and draw. I've done that, we tried that before with the ChatGPT even earlier version and uh, that actually worked pretty well because uh, me as a human being can reason through spatial things a lot better than ChatGPT can. Um, so I can just draw the free body diagrams following ChatGPT's word description of what I should be drawing. So I draw that to represent my object, gravitational force acting vertically downward. Normal force uh, perpendicular to the surface, yeah, exerted by the incline, yeah. 
uh, apply the force parallel to the incline. Yeah, it looks like this. Um, okay, coordinate system break the forces into components parallel and perpendicular to the incline. Oh, so it's picked that for me. All right. Um, so I think uh, simply pasting in the solution, it pr I think ChatGPT is giving you too much. You probably should have st um, try a little first and then give uh, ChatGPT some indication of that. I'll do that with the next question. So here, right now, this is the exercise I'm picking. So I'm breaking the gravitational force into a component that's parallel, that's this. And it says it's uh, mg sine th uh, 30 degrees. And I'll go through some steps making uh, sense of that. The perpendicular component, that's mg cosine 30 degrees. And really the work you have to do, uh, you know, and make sure that you understood it yourself before accepting that answer is the geometry work. So 30 degrees, this angle given here, and you have to kind of go through a geometry exercise, uh, locating this angle, either to be this angle or this angle. It's going to be one of the two. And that'll determine which one is a sine, which one is cosine. And uh, here, if I'm looking through it, I might look at, well, this is one right triangle I have here. This is right triangle. This is the 90 degrees minus um, minus uh, the 30 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is another right triangle, so this angle must be 90 degrees minus that, which will give me 30 degrees. So going through all that reasoning process, I have this says 30 degrees, then the sine makes sense, that's the opposite over the hypotenuse, and cosine here makes that sense, uh, adjacent over the hypotenuse. Uh, this is the kind of exercise, hopefully, um, you go through it enough, like, you know, two dozen times, and at some point it'll feel like, um, uh, like, it feel like, uh, like, uh, just uh, something that's, uh, I can't find the right words, <laughs> feel very natural to you, like, if, uh, so natural that if uh, someone walk you in the middle of a night, gave you the drawing, and tell you, figure out the component values, you can do it in your sleep, basically. Like that's the goal. Uh, it should the process should have become very mechanical. Okay, I have coordinate system. Newton's second law apply along the direction of incline, considering that force acting along the incline. Okay, try doing. I, I did that. Writing out the net force equation in the direction parallel to incline. Okay. Uh, so let me do this. Uh, I like I have been doing last couple sessions. I'll. Try following the instructions and just make some mistakes. Um, so, um, so I might make a mistake like this. Net force is equal to F plus N plus mg sine 30 degrees plus mg cosine degrees, uh, 30 degrees. I is equal to zero. I have made several mistakes here. <laughs> the you know I'm just simulating someone who feels lost and might have seen people just add up the forces uh, and I'm basically ignoring this part you know net force equation in the direction parallel to incline and so but let's imagine that we have that and um, let's see what kind of feedback ChatGPT gives uh, uh, I have net force is equal to F plus N plus mg sine 30 plus mg cosine 30 and i really should be writing degrees but i'm simulating someone who's really lost so uh, how, uh what do i do next uh, it should be telling me to correct my mistake first <laughs> so it'll explain forces on the incline Gravitational force has components. Um, so separate the components parallel and perpendicular. So parallel and perpendicular. Normal force is perpendicular, so you just can ignore it. Yeah. Parallel component gravity, good. He uh, already mentioned that one. Um, okay, apply the force. Okay, that's like the parallel to incline. Okay. Correct equation should involve only, yeah. And it also corrected a sign error that I was making. I just added it really should be minus mg sine. 30 degrees. And um, it didn't explicitly say it, um, uh, but it corrected my mistake, setting it equal to zero as MA. Um, 
and it looks like it's basically solved it because from this equation uh so let me just uh, try asking this L let's imagine you know so you're trying to read that description and understand it and let's say um all right you you did net force is equal to and you got that it's you know f minus mg sine theta because uh, it's uh, um, the opposite directions so you have f minus mg sine 30 degrees and let's say you're not i mean you shouldn't be but let's say you are sh confused by this you know why isn't this zero and uh, i'll ask a chat gpt that uh, why isn't it uh net force is equal to f minus mg sine 30 degrees equals zero I mean, one obvious reason why is that you need to solve for... Oh, wait, you don't need to solve for acceleration. Never mind. So, ChatGPT will probably explain. Um, so, why isn't it that? And it's explaining... Uh, it, yeah, it would it be correct if the crate were moving at a constant velocity or, you know, where the... the, the it, uh, it's uh, at rest and stays at rest. So, it's zero acceleration. Meaning the acceleration would be zero. Uh, but the crate is accelerating up. You are given the acceleration. So you need to account for that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's right. Uh, next, plug in the values for MGAA. Um, wonder. Um, so you can do the algebra. This is pretty easy algebra. And I think in one of the sessions, I have uh, demonstrated ChatGPT correcting my... Um, my sage math code where i've tried to do, do it made some mistakes and had the ChatGPT correct it let me see if uh, ChatGPT can give me a code from scratch uh, so uh, i'm allowed to use a sage math for class work uh, can you give me an example of a sage math code that i can use to solve this problem it simply gives me a working code to start. Oh, wow, you can convert to radians that way? Oh, we'll give that a try. I, I mean, I, I might learn something new. You know, I'm a, a autodidact, meaning self-taught, on programming stuff. Uh, and one of the downside of being a, being an autodidact is that you just learn the stuff that you thought were relevant and you just not learn certain stuff so let me just give this a try uh so uh, i'll uh let's see um so i need to put in this code it says python but um it's giving me python um uh, wait do i need No, uh, it, it didn't quite give me what I wanted. Um, so, um, yeah, solve for f. So it's already done, assuming that we solve for f. So it, it looks like this uh, Python code um, uses an algebraic expression for f that was done by hand. Uh, I want to write a sage math code that will also do the algebra based on the equation we had uh, above. Uh, let me try to copy and paste it. If it doesn't give me what I want, then I'll move on. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is now going to be Sage Man. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's give that a try. And I do want to try that uh, Radiance, because I, I do think that's actually better, because, uh, um, because uh, uh, you know, I, I do the conversion by multiplying, buying a, buying a, 
that okay, I finally remember it. Uh, usually, you know, the, the uh, pi multiplication by pi over 180. But if there's a function that's written that way, that's much more readable, better. So I do want to do that actually. So let me uh, type this in. It's, so Sage methods, I mean, uh, ChatGPT's programming style is a little bit different from mine. That's fine. Uh, red is equal to radians. And I might actually like that radians function, assuming it works. So it's defining variable equation, which is that um, mathematical thing. Um, and this is a, a not a, so this is an assignment symbol, assigning what's on the right hand side into the variable. This is an equality uh, um, Boolean operator um, that tests if left hand side left hand side is equal to right hand side. Uh, M times A, uh, and then solution is a solve. Equation for f and displaying solution. Uh, see what it does. Oops, uh, I forgot the times. I think, yeah, no implied multiplication in Sage math, and it's not the vanilla Sage math. Uh, radians not defined. Um, okay, <laughs> let's see if it help me. Uh, it says. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, that's so. All right, yeah. So I have to just keep doing what I've been doing. And in fact, uh, while we are doing that, let me um, make sure to um, uh, let me um, make sure to just to do the. Um, do the uh, decimal approximation because uh, I think if there's a um, pi in there, it'll probably try to do um, exact calculation at some point and that can get annoying. Uh, all right, so we have that. And uh, it already gave me earlier uh, how to plug in the numbers, I think. Um, a solution and then if you also want to compute the numerical value then substitute in known values for this uh, in this way yeah the substitution syntax so let me just cut a little bit of corner and the solution the is that the right one yeah okay yeah and then plug in substitute m is equal to m value 70 kilogram G is equal to G value 9.8 and A is equal to A value 1.2. Just uh, shortcutting some of the stuff um, so that it's a little simpler. Uh, 427. Okay, so we have 15 minutes. Uh, uh, so let me just say. Uh, worked well. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we have 15 minutes. Let me get one other question um, and then see where we are after that one other question. Um, there's probably a more complicated question where it involves multiple objects. So let me find that first. Um, this, um, it, this is your um, Dynamics Lab setup, so let me not do it again. <laughs> That's been done too many times. Uh, Oh, uh, let's see. Do I want to just do banked curve? Let's do a banked curve one. Uh, so there's one with a, yeah, friction. So this is a fairly, uh, friction makes things a little complicated. So I think this is a good one. Um, so, um, so let's see. So let me, um, this is the question, uh, and I'll post my diagrams, uh, diagram right after. Let's see uh, what it says. So let me draw my diagram. So you might have seen me draw a diagram that looks like this. You, I usually give a back view that can illustrate the angle of the banking. And this is my drawing of a car. 
um, and then I might also draw a top view. Uh, that can be used to illustrate the uh, the ra the radius of the curve. Let's see. Um, so R is equal to a hundred meters, uh, and theta is equal to nineteen degrees. All right, I kept this on a relatively clean side so that I can just copy and paste this in. Um, does this uh, drawing look right? Uh, and I'll give a free body diagram a try. Yeah, I'm saying that so that it doesn't just give me free body diagrams right away. Yeah, okay, it's telling you what forces to consider, good. Um, mm, yeah, okay. It's, okay, so with those help, I think I can try drawing my free body diagram and just thinking through the kind of mistakes I might make. Because, you know, if it's all perfect, then hey, you didn't need ChatGPT or me. <laughs> so let me try something that's not perfect. So I can imagine someone um, drawing gravity mg, and maybe you confuse uh, with other situations where normal force was directly up, and uh, you might draw something like I don't know uh, uh, fc centrifugal force or centripetal force that you draw as a separate force rather than it being. Uh, so I'll say, I think you forgot the centripetal force. Yeah. And the correction is that, you know, a component of normal force gives you the centripetal force. It's not a separate force. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, never mind. So this is actually a... Um, Oh, wait, wait, yeah, 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 okay, it, uh, it's actually giving you correct. Yeah, so let me read it carefully. So here, I definitely made a mistake. And um, the thing that I was worried about is sometimes generative AI can be overly accommodating when you, you know, guess, try to gaslight it, it'll just agree with you. Um, so when it says you are right, the centripetal force is indeed a key part of the analysis for a banked curve. So let's clarify its role. I think it was just being diplomatic instead of telling you, you know, you're stupid to include a centripetal force. Probably to being diplomatic. Um, it says your free body diagram shows gravity downward, which is correct. Normal force. Now, um, it, it's not quite right. The way I drew it was vertical. Should have been drawn at an angle. So, um, but let's see. As the centripetal force pointing horizontally toward the center of the curve, and then it says, however, it's not an additional force by itself. That is correct. Centripetal force is a net force that results in circular motion. So it's like a net force. You don't draw it separately. You get it by adding up all the forces. It results from the horizontal components of other forces, primarily the normal force. Yeah. So at the ideal speed, it's provided entirely by the component of the normal force. Yeah, good. The normal force can be split into, and hopefully as you are reading this, you realize that this direction is wrong and um, you should have uh, made sure that uh, the normal force goes in this direction perpendicular to the surface. So let me make the correction. So I have uh, normal force going this way. And uh, ChatGPT gave me the vertical and horizontal components. Um, vertical and cos theta and horizontal and sine theta. Uh, or the centripetal force is equal to that, uh, which is horizontal component of yeah, normal force. So it's giving me us yeah, key equations. Yeah, let me, and so 
uh, let me do this. I'll give him my corrected diagram, and then ask it if uh, you know the the horizontal component shouldn't be n cosine theta. And because you know this is the kind of thing that people do get confused on. Sometimes you get into habit of associating horizontal with the cosine, vertical with the sine, and it's not. Um, that's not always the case. Uh, and the, what I recommend is get into draw, the habit of drawing triangle and you will always get it right there. Demonstrated in other videos. Uh, so I'll say, so I had this diagram, uh, but shouldn't the horizontal component of a normal force be and cosine theta? Uh, vertical, uh, yeah. So, uh, vertical component is adjacent to the angle, and horizontal component is opposite to the angle. And this is where I say, uh, get into the habit of drawing the diagrams. So if you, so you might need some auxiliary figures, you know, like the ink, the incline there. So this is theta. Then you need to go through exercise of uh, uh, where is that theta? Well, that theta is here also. This is 90 degrees. Um, wait, does that help me? Uh, so this is uh, 90 degrees minus theta. Uh, and this is 90 degrees, which means this is 90 degrees minus that angle. 90s cancel out and you get theta. So um, so th that's a, those steps are what I mean when I say draw the triangle, kind of going through that geometry exercise of where is the theta. And uh, you have to locate it. So. Yeah, once you've located, then uh, what ChatGPT says will make sense. Yeah, so it's repeating what it gave me before. Um, uh, yes, uh, let me try solving for V. Uh, so it gave me two equations, and I guess I can try... Um, Solving for it by hand um, and just trying to think of what other mistakes can I make? Um, I mean One easy mistake to make is uh, to eliminate the wrong variable so out of this uh, Equation of uh, out of this these two equations you should ident identify the unknowns n and v and eliminate n to solve for v, but uh, someone um, uh, not being familiar with the solving system of equations might do something like eliminate theta instead. So I could say, okay, from the second equation, cosine theta is equal to mg over n, and sine theta is equal to square root of one minus um, you know, cosine squared theta, so m squared g squared over n squared. I can plug that in here. So let me um, let me do this. Uh, let me write out the equation. So plugging this into sine theta, I have n square rooted 1 minus m squared g squared over n squared is equal to mv squared over r and then I'll paste that in and say I have this but I'm not sure where to go next. I got this so far but I'm not sure what to do next. I wonder if it will recognize I uh, eliminate the wrong variable. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, let me um, erase some of, uh, let me actually erase them all because I don't think I actually <laughs> um, yeah, started with two equations. Ah, it is a solving for n. Uh, uh, so, let me see if I can get it to explain. Uh, so, uh, why uh, are you solving for n? I don't think uh, I need n. Um, maybe it'll explain. I introduced help explain the process. We can, well, uh, 
two equations is the solving pro oh <laughs> yeah this is where uh, i wish i would say that um uh, what you need is basically uh, so what I should say is that you have system of two equations, two unknowns. Uh, one of the unknowns, you don't need it, so you eliminate it. There are different ways to eliminate it. The first time, ChatGPT did it by solving for it first. That's great. That's actually what I would recommend most of the time. Uh, this is another way you can eliminate it, which sometimes works. Uh, I wish ChatGPT would explain that, but I think uh, trying to get it to that explanation would uh, take too much work. So I'll just plug this in and uh, get the right answer. So... Um, RG, that's approximately 1,000 uh, tangent of 20 degrees. Um, can I, I don't think I can do that in my head. Uh, yeah, so I'll just I'll do it in a calculator. Uh, 9.8 times uh, 19 tangent. Uh, all of that square rooted. 18.4 Great, uh, I got 18.4 meter per second and that seems to be right for part A uh, Where do I start for B? Oh it's gonna take some time. Pretty sure this is saving them some money to hire. Um, it, this is, you know, what is it, reinforcement learning or. Um, because uh, usually when they originally train the models, they have humans uh, looking at the responses and kind of uh, scoring which one is better. They're getting their customers to do it <laughs> so excellent part yeah, getting correct for part b yeah so you know let me do it this way i guess uh, i could uh, uh, read it carefully and tell tell you what i think is the um, better one and actually pass that feedback along to chat gpt um, so i think uh, response two is done so let me read that first Excellent work on uh, part A. You need to move on to part B. Minimum coefficient, convert speed. Oh, sure. Uh, set of forces. Calculate the friction of force needed. Forces involved are all of that. Oh, wait, this is actually wrong. Um, so friction being present will change the vertical component of the net force. So this will no longer be correct. That's actually wrong. Um, yeah, which I think... Um, so this uh, being wrong, I don't think that will affect, um, end up affecting anything. Because the way they are so setting up the equation and solving for... Um, or no, it is affecting something. Yeah, I think they've assumed that N is equal to that mg thing so i'm pretty sure that's wrong um yeah so i'm hope a is correct which took longer so convert speed setting up the equation yeah net centripetal force required the it never um highlight this which is that you need to recognize acceleration is horizontal um, um, people might try to do the acceleration along the incline um Normal force remains as that. Oh wait, that's also wrong. Um, so do I tell it? But you know, this uh, might um, be okay because the way they are setting up the equation, they're just doing this. Wait, no. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's still wrong. Um, Well, um, this is wrong because you have to get the horizontal component of friction. But I think once you get the horizontal component of friction, then it is this. Uh, so this equation itself is 
correct finally. Um, so, but where it says since n is equal to mg cosine theta, I'm pretty sure that's still wrong. Uh, so, uh, and they both have the same answer basically, or wait, um, oh yeah, they, they just kept the g, that's fine. Uh, there's an e extra factor of cosine here, which might be correct. Um, but so I'll do it this way. So um, first, let me demonstrate that the answer that it's getting is wrong. Um, so I'll say, so so I'll plug it into um, do that. So we have speed of conversion. Oh wait, they already did that before. So let me twenty kilometers per hour. Is that right? Um, can't do that in my head. <laughs> Twenty times thousand. Uh, yeah, okay, that's right. Uh, so that's speed um, squared divided by one hundred minus nine point eight times uh, sine of that. That the whole thing is um, numerator divided by nine point eight. Divide by yeah already um, the, that minus a sign should be an indicator that something's wrong. Uh, so um, I need cosine of nineteen squared. So that nineteen cosine squared. That's the right order for my Windows calculator. Goes okay. So I'll say I get minus zero point three two nine. So I prefer this response. Uh, both are wrong. I, I get uh, mu equals minus 0 0.3 to 9. And I think that that's wrong. It, it shouldn't be negative, right? I can plug. And even if I were to plug in a positive version of that, it'll say it's wrong because it's wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me get to a closer look at the force balance. Uh, me frightened driver to take the I think this is too slow so um yeah so this is probably at the level of complexity where it yeah it, it's still doing it wrong so i think i described chat gpt as a tutor and uh, that uh, and i do mean it in every sense in the sense that i know how to do it correctly ChatGPT <laughs> doesn't <laughs> so so let me not uh, bother with the ChatGPT, but so that we don't uh, end this session on this uh, unsatisfying note let me uh, try to give you the correct answer uh, as quickly as i can so you start at, you do have to start out with the correct free body diagram mg and and um Oh wait, is normal force not affected by friction? Oh wow, uh, I was mistaken. Normal force is not affected by friction because I think it will be perpendicular. Why did I think normal force would be affected? Uh, oh, you know what? I know why. It is affected by friction. So let me. Um, so the main thing is that acceleration is in this direction. So the way you should break up forces is this way. So. Um, this is still theta. I'm just doing it quickly. Um, in the interest of time, we are already over time. And the friction is similarly, you know, cosine, sine. Um, so I think I can do that. So you have net force in the x direction. Left toward is going to be positive. I'll, so that gives me and sine theta minus. Um, F cosine theta is equal to mv squared over r net force in the y direction. And this is where the friction does affect the normal force. Because it's going to be n cosine theta plus F sine theta minus mg is equal to 0. So instead of n being equal to mg over cosine theta, and it's actually, you know, there's that involved. So what I would actually recommend is uh, you have one, two, three unknowns. Or sorry, not V is not an unknown, uh, mu. Uh, mu is not even in this equation. So you need to involve mu. 
So the way to do it is this relationship. F is equal to mu n. Technically less than or equal to for static, but um, we are looking at the minimum coefficient, so equality will be fine. So you got one, two, three equations, uh, one, two, three unknowns, so it's solvable. Let me do this in Sage Math in the interest of time. Um, so I'm gonna. Um, and theta f uh, m it, it will cancel out, but I'll just write it in uh, r. So I think that's uh, n mu. I think that's everything. Equation one is equal to n times sine theta um, minus f times cosine theta is equal to n times v squared over r. Equation two is equal to n times cosine theta plus f times the sine Oops, uh, minus m times g is equal to zero. Equation three is equal to f is equal to um, mu times n and solve uh, equation. Uh, I need to put them into a list. A system of three equations solving for mu, f, n. So having it solved for mu first because that's really all I need. Uh, so that's gonna be in souls and let's see make sure this works and then once uh, that works oh I forgot to define G once that works then I will yeah get the so um, zeroth element of the outer list zeroth element of that will give me mu once I have that I can then substitute in all the values I know V is equal to 5.56. Um, uh, theta is equal to uh, still 19 degrees, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. So 19 times n of pi over 180. Um, converting to radian on the fly. Uh, and what else did I? F is unknown. M. Don't think I need it. M will just have canceled out. Yeah. Uh, G is equal to 9.8. Uh, v is equal. To, oh wait, I already plugged it in V. R is equal to 100. Uh, let, let me see where we are at after that. So I get yeah, 0 0.309. That should be correct. Uh, yeah. All right. So I'll just, uh, yeah, so that's how you'd solve it. Don't know how much more prompting would have taken to get ChatGPT to, to get this right, given that it constantly makes this mistake. So I'll just say, uh, all right, I think uh, I got it. I asked the professor and he uh, gave me the answer, which I never would do, but you know, <laughs> it's your hand. Mu uh, is equal to 0 0.309. And uh, if you want the more proper version of doing this, there's a homework helpful video where I go through it properly.